Hi there, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and we have a fabulous guest tonight. He's been with us plenty of times before because everybody asks lots of questions of him because he's got the answers. Rob Siglin Paglia. Rob, how you doing? Good. How you guys doing? Great. We're going to have a great time. We're going to be talking about all sorts of cool stuff, talking about the legal aspects of your voiceover business. There's stuff you probably wouldn't even think about. But if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room in Facebook Live, or if you're watching on YouTube, throw it in the chat room there, and we will get to those questions in just a little while. So stay tuned. Rob Siglampaglia, voiceover in the law, coming up on VoiceOver Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio, and together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super-secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Oh, you're so glad to have that pad with all the sound effects back, aren't you? I, I am, I am. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to our show this week. Uh, we've got a great guest, as we were saying. Rob Siglampaglia will be joining us in just a minute. And uh, again, we invite your questions. Throw them in the chat room if you're watching us live right now. If you're watching this in replay, you had your chance. But now's a great time to ask your questions, so get those in right now. How are you doing, Mr. Whittem? I'm doing pretty good. I've uh, been staying active and counting the days for my girlfriend to come back from Iran where she is again, but, uh, I'm doing fine. And, uh, I'm, you know, we, we've been switching it up in studio. Sometimes we come into the studio together. Sometimes we're apart. Each of them have their own pros and cons, you know, right. when we come in together, it's so much more fun in a way because we get to be together and interact, but it's also a lot more challenging from a technical aspect of this, uh, aspect, perspective. I just made up a new word <laughs> to uh, yeah. to make it all look good. So uh, you know, I, there's pros and cons. But I, again, I, I I like having my big colorful buttons to press <laughs> over here, we, which I don't we, have in the other studio. So yeah, we have the same buttons over here, though. We can. I, but we can I, my arm's not time. long enough. I, I have to reach <laughs> over the desk and push my finger in front of Sue's face. I'll have to teach Sue which <laughs> buttons are which. And, there we go. Now she figured it out already. Yeah, she knows that board. All righty. Well, let's get on to our guest tonight, uh, Rob Siglum Paglia. And by the way, I'm the only person licensed to be able to pronounce his name right. Uh, is currently a practicing attorney as well as an actor and accomplished voiceover artist. Uh, Rob hosted a local radio program back in the mid 90s, just like me, called The Law Show. Mine wasn't about the law. And more recently, hosted a radio show called Ask the Lawyer. But we're going to talk about voiceover. And the law. He's also the author of a great book that we should all read, which I've read several times, especially when there's something going on that I like. What does Rob have to say about this? Called Voice Over Legal. Let's welcome back to Voice Over Body Shop, Rob Siglum Paglia. 
Counselor, welcome back. Good to be here. How are you guys doing? Doing fabulous. Good Just great. Right. great. Great to have you back on the show. And, you know, we have you on every few years and uh, people, you know, the questions start to accumulate, but there's a lot of stuff going on out there. But the thing, but let me lead off with this. I mean, you do everything. I mean, I keep making the joke about you're also a floor wax, but we'll drop that one tonight. Uh, I mean, you're 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 a lawyer, you're a voice actor, you're you know an actor and a producer, and you got a lot of films coming out right now. Where do you find the time to do all of these things successfully? Aren't you a dad too? Yeah, I mean, yep, dad. Well, now my kids are grown, so that gives me a little more time. Well, that oh, helps. Okay. Okay. <laughs> my youngest is in a senior in college, so. Oh man! Congratulations! All That's right. Nice. Yeah, almost yeah, so finished I mean, paying for that one. Yep, yep. I still have to pay for the older ones, though. <laughs> <laughs> so how is it that you, you do all these things? I mean, how did you end up this, this, and that? I mean, it, one thing kind of led to the next. And, I mean, everything revolves around my legal career. So that's kind of how everything evolved as well. Um, the acting and the, and the voiceovers are things I, I make time for because I, I love doing it. Um, producing came out of me being a lawyer because I learned the business side of things um, by representing film producer clients. Um, and then uh, because I always did the on camera myself, I knew the the creative, more creative artistic side of it. So that's how I ended up being a producer. I got asked by, you know, some of my producer clients if I would come on on projects and be a producer. Then I just started my own company. Uh, back in 2015, Bel Air Productions, and that's where I started to do my own films, my own projects, getting my own te a team assembled. Um, right. I'm actually shooting uh, uh, a sizzler, the sizzle reel pilot that we're starting next week here in Connecticut. So it, it's, uh, you know, things are they're going well, and it's uh, I, I love doing it, so I find the time. So that's great. Now, producing is all about <clears throat> using somebody else's money, right? It's about finding the money. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's different sources, different ways of finding enough money and enough resources to get things done. So, you I like I that mean, part. That seems like one of the, that would seem like one of the hardest parts to me. Do you, that do you that is that? one of the hardest parts, but it's also for me it is that's a challenge. So, yeah. you know, we you know we uh, you know there are many ways to get a film done, um, many different ways to get the resources that you need. Um, so it's uh, every every project's different. Every project has, you know, different ways that uh, that the financing's done, that you know, the resources get together, um, and you know, I uh, because I know guys like you, <laughs> I could get talent together that want to put their uh, energies together and come up with a project. So that's that's the way that uh, a lot of them are done. Um, by, like a motivator, by cheerleader, in a way. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you know, we. We'll get, uh, we'll collaborate. We'll get, uh, you know, try to find a nice script that we want to shoot that everyone gets a nice part in. And then, you know, then everyone, it's easier when you have a team, obviously, than one person that doing, trying to do everything themselves. At least for me, I, I like to, the collaboration part is the part that I really, I really enjoy. So. Yeah. That's always the most fun part of any project. And as voice actors generally were alone, uh, and don't really get to work with anybody unless you're doing a remote session with somebody and uh, you know those and that that makes it all worth it because that's a lot more fun you know the, the thing is is there are all sorts of issues facing freelance voice talent today i mean freelance anything uh as far as business goes and people you know i'm sure you find this people don't read contracts or even have them in many cases what's the most important thing to remember when you land a gig well, I would say most artists don't read contracts. Not most, no, most we're artists. people <laughs> really read contracts. So that's the difference between like the production, the business production side and the artistic side. So that's when an art, when an artist gets a gig, they need to just take it, treat it like a business. Like, like that's, that's the biggest tip I can give. You know, when, once you get, when you get a gig, it, it you're now you're in the business side. Now you're going to be talking about how much pay, you're going to be talking about usage. You're going to be talking about all the things that are going to affect your business life. <laughs> and it could, you know, if you're giving things away, it could affect your entire career. So, you know, the first thing to do is just read the contract because a lot of times you can, you'll be able to, I mean, almost 
all the time. You'll be able to see if there's things in there that you don't understand or you do understand. You know, if there's things in there that, that look like they're red flags, they probably are red flags. You know, you may or may not need your agent or an attorney to look over the contract. I mean, if you don't understand what you're signing, then it would probably be a good idea to get a professional to look or even just a even a professional talent that's been doing it for a while, you know, to look over the contract. Um, just read it. I mean, that that's that's the best advice that you gave, Dan. Like, read the contract. Like that. That's <laughs> that's it's that's, a, what, that's what I do. I mean, you know, and you and you start to look at them. I mean, a lot of them are fairly what I guess we call boilerplate, uh, and and some of them, you know, things are hidden in there, and you've got to read them. You know, first uh, like it always starts off. This is the party that is doing this, and this is the party that's doing that. And, right. you know, defining who everybody is and then here's the scope of the work and then the scope of compensation and all those things. So if you understand what each section is about, but then they throw it into, into legalese and how do you decipher that kind of stuff? If you're not quite, uh, you know, good at that sort of thing. Well, see what I, what I propose, what I usually propose to talent is they be the ones that send out their template or their memorandum because they're going to be getting something unless the, unless the um, person is in the voiceover industry, they're going to get a contract that is not really going to fit what they're doing. So they should be ready to send out their own contract, their own memorandum, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, if you don't like to you call it a contract because you think it's going to scare away uh, your client, which I've heard that before, you know, just agreement. call it a memorandum or an agreement. Memorandum. Right. Agreement yeah. is also, you can use that word too. Yeah. yeah. Memo, right. Memo or an agreement and just send it out that has all the basics laid out. You know, like you said, the party's names, of course, the, 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 uh, the amount you're going to get paid, um, scope of the work, how many re rereads you're going to do, if any, um, how, how long the, uh, the, the, uh, reading your pages are going to be, you know, is it going to be a page? Is it going to be two? Is it going to be three? Um, how long it's going to be used. So is it going to, where it's going to be used? Is it going to be on the internet for a year or is it going to go on national TV, you know, for 13 weeks. So like, those are important things to have laid out. It's a good idea and, to get ahead can, of it. Instead of waiting for the the client or whatever to, to supply you an agreement, you have, right. your, you have your agreement Just, with that everything is. is you expect it to be. And then you there may even be stuff in there that they didn't think about or anticipate. Exactly. Right? There, there will be unless, unless, unless they're involved somehow in the voiceover business, like they're yeah. this voiceover producer or an agent or a casting person, you know, they're, you're going to, the, their contracts are not, they're not going to be exactly a good fit for, for the voiceover business. So that's why I always, I tell clients just, you know, send out your, have an agreement ready and send it out. And you know, nine times out of 10 clients are going to sign it. No problem. You know, you, they, they may say they need legal to look it over, whatever, that's fine. But, uh, you know, you're not going to get all those, some of the contracts that I see that come from, from clients when they're sending them to all their general contractors and they include, you know, voice talent as a, a general contractor. You know, some of the things in there are crazy. I just had one of those the other day that I, that came in. It was like, I don't know, I think it was like 16 pages or something like that. It was, it was insane. And it had all these crazy provisions about, you know, having to have $2 million of general liability and $5 million of workers comp and all this crazy stuff. Oh, and I man. was like, no, no, we, we need to cross that across, you know, <laughs> most of the stuff just to, and the job was already done too. Like it was, they were have, have her sign the contract after the job was, was she already ever sent the files in. So it was even more crazy at that, yeah, really. at that point. Yeah. I, that's, that's the interesting thing. You know, I've, you know, I've, I've signed a lot of NDAs and a lot of contracts and really I look at NDAs and I'm like, well, this looks more like a contract than an NDA. And the NDA right. is sort of built into the contract and stuff, right? A non-disclosure right. agreement for those of you who have never heard of that before, uh, because you know companies are like, you know, we don't want you telling anybody what it is we're working on because right. it's a surprise or it's some proprietary information. But you know, I, I I look at these contracts and you know most of the time it's like, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with this unless they're not going to pay me. You know, or, you know, something along those lines. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm always looking for, well, again, you were talking about usage and where are they going to put this? And is it different from what they advertised, say, when you were, uh, you know, when you were auditioning for that sort of thing? Right. What, what sort of things would you look for? 
Well, that's that happens all the time where the, the audition says it's got to be a, an internet thing. And then you get a, your contract and they want in, in perpetuity use for all media. And it's like, wait a minute. I auditioned for a, a one year internet. Why don't we put that into the, why can't we put that into the contract? You know, and if you get pushback on that, that should be a major red flag that, that pops up. So, you know, that, that's one easy example of that, um, you know, of the usage part of it. Um, and it does happen a lot. So if you can even incorporate the terms of the listing of the audition into the contract, so make it, make it like schedule a an attachment, you know, that's, that will, clarify things as well you know that will help define what the terms are and what the usage terms are based on what you thought they were when you auditioned versus what they actually were when you got the piece of paper and it, it, you know obviously i try to give people the benefit of the doubt and you know I, I would say that that was a mistake you know when they used the form contract and they didn't they didn't define it as as per what the audition stated so you know i would approach that more of a you know, a mistake if I was going to be negotiating it versus just saying, "Hey, hey, you're trying to, you're trying to rip me off," kind of thing. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I always take the, I always take the, it's the, be- I always give them the benefit of the doubt when I approach it because I don't, uh, you know, it, a lot of times it, it actually could be because many times the, you know, the people that are actually the ones that you're talking to in an organization, you know, or are not the ones that are making the decisions. It's someone above them. And then the people that are above, above them send out their agreement. And, you know, the people that you're, you're talking to don't even really know what's, what's in the agreement. So another right. reason why it's really important to read, read it because, you know, you got to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So that's what, that's what a contract is for. Right. Making sure yeah. everyone's on the same page. Yeah. It, it's in it. And you're right because you talk to people, well, what's this about? Oh, uh, yeah, I got to get back to you. So it's like, all right, clearly this is an underling uh, right. who who hasn't read the contract themselves, and perhaps they should understand this kind of stuff themselves as well. Right. So I just say uh, legal, legal wrote it. That's that's the answer you get. Yeah, legal. Mm. Legal. Okay, it. great. Um, you, were, you were just talking about getting pushback and stuff like that. I don't recall ever getting pushback on something where uh, – you know, I've said, I, I'm not sure if I can agree to this or something like that. Well, I say, no, no, well, we're not going to do it. They're, they're generally, if they want you, they're going, they're going to not bend over backwards, but they're going right. to try and at least meet you halfway on stuff and at least try to come to a, something that's going to work for everybody. Yes. I mean, it depends on the issue, of course, you know, like usage is usually one where that could, that could cause the deal to fall apart. So but that's one we have to try to get a happy medium, you know, because yeah. I mean, if they're asking for in perpetuity usage forever in all mediums, you know, you, you got to try to, you got to try to pin the client down because you know, they're not going to use it forever. And, and you know that, the, you know, it's not going to be air on all medium. So you got to try to pin them down as to what they're, they're actually the possible uses are going to be, they don't even have to actually know exactly what they're going to use it for, but they have, they have to have an idea of what they want yeah. to use it for. So that's, that could go into the contract, but that would be, that would be, I've seen pushback on, on that issue. Right. Of course, pay, you know, that there could be a pushback on that issue, yeah. you know, trying yeah. to try to reach a price. Um, so that's just, but you, that one, I mean, usually works itself out. You just going back and forth and negotiating and haggling. And that, that one's usually, you know, it just takes a little time, but uh, you may not get exactly what you want, but you can always tell a good negotiation if the other side doesn't get exactly what they want and you're not getting exactly what, what you want. That's right. that's how you know you struck a good deal. So, <laughs> Good, good point. Uh, you know, and, and of course, you know, g- getting paid, like making sure you look at, you know, what are the terms, you know, we'll pay you within 90 days or something along those yep. lines. Uh, and that's also something you need to pay attention to. Yes. Yes. Corporations and larger companies, you know, some can take up to six months or even put in the contract that they're going to take up to 180 days, six months to, to make a payment. So, you know, that's something you should know, at least know up front. And then most of these contracts, you're giving up your um, ownership rights in copyright. So right. what I, what I try to do to limit that is I say, I'll put a limit in that, that you're, you're not giving up the copyright until you get paid. So I'll write that in to almost every contract that I see, 
you know, because right. that's a way to protect yourself where you're not going to, you'll, you'll retain rights as owner to the files until payment comes in. So that's a good way to protect yourself to get paid as well. So right. if you're just joining us, where have you been? Uh, we're talking with Rob Siglum Paglia, who is a voice actor, but even more importantly, he is an attorney dealing with all the issues that we talk about with voiceover from a legal aspect and he's tops in the business at it. And that's why we have him on our show. If you've got a question for him again, throw it in the Facebook chat room or on the YouTube chat room, uh, in the comments section there, and we will get that, uh, that question here. I know Jeff Holman is out there somewhere, probably in his den or somewhere writing all this stuff down and getting it to us. So we'll be able to talk to uh, Rob about this in the next session, uh, in about, well, after our first break, um, let's talk, uh, we were just talking about, uh, you know, usage and stuff like that. Big issue that is coming up right now. And this is really one of the reasons I wanted to have you on this week is dealing with AI voices and mm -hmm. taking people's voices. And I know you're involved in a couple of cases where talent have felt they've been taken advantage of, or the, the client was not honest and is. I wouldn't say stealing their voice, but is usurping their voice or how would you describe that? And, and what are, what are some of the cases you're working on? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's using it without, a, without the authority that they had in the original agreement, like you were just talking about. So that, that's basically what they're doing. So, you know, so the, the, the typical case is, you know, a few years ago, talent would be approached to, uh, you know, read a thousand lines of text you know, for some kind of translation or some kind of, kind of educational piece. Um, and, um, you know, getting paid a couple of thousand, two to four thousand dollars. And then all of a sudden, you know, it shows up somewhere else, uh, you know, like to in a big, in a big text to speech usage, you know, like one of the cases is TikTok, you know, using Bev Standing's voice. Um, that's exactly what happened to her. She had done a, 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 a job. I don't know about four or five years ago, it was, you know, supposed to be used for translation and then it ended up being the text to speech voice for, for TikTok. So these voices, these um, cases are more, much more common now. Um, I've, I've seen, I'm working on three personally. So, um, you know, it's, and the good thing about Bev is she, she didn't really have a contract. There was no contract saying what the usage were, but now the, the uh, all these firms that are recording text to speech to speech voices are getting they're getting contracts signed and they're taking all rights so a case like bev's if she had signed one of these contracts that i see today would not exist because she would have signed all her rights away so mm. it's something and there are there's different kind of contracts that i've seen for the artificial intelligence you know some i like and some i don't like so i mean i'll be glad to share the differences with you please uh, yeah, tell yeah, yeah. tell us yeah so the ones i don't like are the ones that just say you know here's record uh two thousand uh lines of of copy and you are giving us complete ownership rights to this to use however we want in perpetuity and we can sell it or transfer it to third parties that's the basis of the agreement of course there's other stuff in there but that's that's the meat of the agreement those are the bad ones and then they you know, pay it a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. You know, I haven't seen more one greater than five five thousand dollars. So, you know, you're not getting a lot of money for the usage that that uh, and the ownership that you're giving up. The good ones that I've seen are the ones where they're cloning your voice. They're um, you're taking, you're giving a license to the company to use the voice, and if it, it they. Um, sell or transfer to a third party, you're able to enter into an agreement with that third party. Um, and so basically it's just, a vo and you get paid a percentage, you get paid a percentage out of whatever um, revenues generated by your cloned voice. So, you know, that's basically just the a cloned you that's making kind of residual income, which those are, I like those contracts. And I've seen a couple of companies out there that are doing those types of contracts. It's getting so, to the point where there's starts are there starting to be some like some buzzwords or jargon for these types of contracts so you can say uh, i'm looking for a yep. contract 
synthetic voice. That's what they're called. Um, I call them clone voices, but uh, you know, synthetic or text to speech. Those mm-hmm. are the, you know, it's the, that's what they say, or art, even even some say artificial intelligence. So those are the buzzwords. Um, and you're looking for a non in perpetuity contract. You'd be looking for yeah, either um, uh, either something where you're giving up the ownership, but it's limited in time for usage, mm-hmm. so that they can use it for a year, two years, or it limits the scope that they can only use it for internet, something like that. Or it's a, the idea is license. You're like you're you're going to keep ownership of your voice, your cloned voice, and they're going to take an uh, revocable license. I mean, even if it's, a, if it's an irrevocable license, as long as they as long as they have something in there that says that if, if they sell that voice or it's transferred somewhere else, that you have a right to you know basically do a contract with those that you're not licensing for that purpose. You're licensing it for whoever you're doing the job for. So. Because, I mean, what they do, the text-to-speech companies, the ones, especially the ones that just buy you outright, or they, they go and sell them, you know, to like TikTok or wherever, you know, speech or whatever, whatever platform they're putting it on. And then they'll, they, uh, they, they'll they get a lot of money for the files, you know, $25,000, $35,000. Or they just put you on a roster. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're, you're recording 1,000 or 2,000 or 10,000 lines or whatever, and then you're on a roster of AI voices. Right. So mm, people great. Up there just, you know, not then you're not getting paid. You're not getting paid for when you know, people go up. In fact, one of the cases I had that um, just settled a couple weeks ago, the person's client had gone to the, done exactly that, gone to the database. And instead of hiring the cl- that uh, artist to do an update to the job, they used the, the, the AI voice that was online. So mm-hmm. they cut her out with her own voice, but her voice got That's was up on that platform without her. Like it, it said in her contract that that could not have, like it's expressly said in the contract. She, she was, had the forethought to put that in her contract that you can't use my voice for. They hope they party. won't get caught. Right. Was this right. like something where it's not being released to the public? Some, or? some, 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 some of them, I think uh, like the, the way that they approach the talent where they say that, uh, you know, we're doing this for an educational thing or for a translation. Yeah. I think they know ahead of time that they're not going to do that. Others, this particular case I was talking about happened to be, I mean, at least I, they told me and they you know, resolved the case based on the fact that it was an accident where they, they had given money to the producer and, a release to the producer to give to the client, to the talent to sign and give them compensation for that. But the, the third party kind of, uh, didn't do what they were supposed to do. We'll put it that way. Yeah. So, I mean, and how are you going to find out about this stuff? I mean, unless you hear your voice on national TV or a national yep. radio spot, unless somebody else is like, Hey, did you do this spot for so-and-so? And you like, well, let me look. Oh, have yep, you ever heard that, of this app <laughs> called TikTok? <laughs> that's, that's the way that they find out. Yeah. Someone will, you know, everyone that, uh, that I represent at least that's how they found out by other people, you know, their family or friends hearing, hearing their voice somewhere and tipping them off. And that's the way that, yeah, that, that's, uh, that is true. It's how do you, how do you find this? How do you, how do you know? How do you know your if voice? You get is being a really used? huge, hairy looking contract, like in electronic form. Do they often get delivered as PDFs nowadays? Not in, you know, physical mail. Uh, there a lot of them are just DocuSign, you know, right, some yeah. kind of electronic so sign. Can you do so, a control F and type in words like perpetuity, unlimited, <laughs> and look for red flags that way? Yeah, <laughs> a, you absolutely you absolutely can. Yeah, that yeah. that's a it's a good point. I mean, it's hard to change those contracts. Right. That's the challenge. So we have but at to, least you get a little tip off. Right. Something. I have to actually print them and scratch it. You know, like that's how I have to change. You can't change them. A lot of times you can't change the PDF online. So it makes it a little harder for me right. to, to mark them up. Right. You know, right if it's in right. word format, I can mark, mark, just mark it up and add well, what I need to Well, if you're on a Mac, you could be using preview and pull up the markup toolbox and you can immediately type over. The- you, I mean, yes, you could do it, but it's still, it's, <laughs> it's, it's still a little, it's more complicated. You yeah. Know, you know what I mean? It's to use the markup tool and type it. It's still a little. Yeah. It's not any, it's, you have to be a little savvy to, to do that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Once again, we're talking with Rob Siglum Pagley here on voiceover body shop. If you've got a question about some legal issue dealing with 
freelance voiceover activity. Write it in the chat room right now, and we'll get to him in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, I'm going to combine these last two questions because it's like, you know, when do you know it's time to get an attorney? And should you get an attorney on retainer? Mm -hmm. See how I neatly combined those two yes, questions. Those are definitely nice. related. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So you need, you need to get an attorney when, if you, you read a contract that you don't understand, if you don't understand the legalese, hire an attorney to go over it. Um, I mean, obviously if someone contacts you saying, you know, cease and desist from putting stuff up on social media, you know, that would be, that'd be a great time to call, to call an attorney. You know, obviously if it's something legal related, you know, if someone's threatening to sue you or something like that, that's the time to talk to an attorney. Um, you know, but everyday business, uh, it's really when you're going to get a contract in and you don't, uh, you don't understand the, the term. So, you know, have, have a con uh, an attorney go over the terms with you, explain them to you, tell you what to take out and what, you know, what not to take out, what to change. Um, and then if you're, if you are using an attorney to draft contracts for you, or if you don't want to have to bother doing that yourself or, and every contract co comes in, you want an attorney to review, then you can actually pay a retainer. So some kind of fixed am monthly amount to an attorney to do all, all of that for you on a monthly basis. So, you know, it would be like, you'd pick a, a number of hours and you'd set up an hourly fee and, and that would be the, that would be the retainer amount that you pay. Um, you know, most of the time it, it's just a job by job thing, the way that yeah. I work, you know, cause mm -hmm. it's a contract comes in, I look at it, I give a, a quote and we, we do it. it it's mm -hmm. cause it, there's usually, I mean, there's usually not a, a steady amount of, of work to retain an attorney. Um, at a sure. fixed monthly amount, but you, I mean, that's the time that you would, like, if you're spending a lot of money and on attorneys every month, and there's a fixed number of hours that you're using an attorney, it would make sense to retain attorney, be, an attorney because you, you'll, you'll save money that way. Right. right. And that's for somebody who is constantly working and constantly, you know, booking, you know, large jobs where there's contracts with each one of them. I mean, I, I don't see a whole lot of contracts. A lot of it is like, here's what we're going to do. And generally they'll just send you an NDA as, as we were saying, which is essentially a contract too, isn't it? Yeah. An NDA is a non-disclosure agreement, not just non-disclosure contract, but it could be, you could call it an NDC, <laughs> but it, it basically just says that, you know, you're not, you're going to keep everything that you've been given or told confidential. You're not going to put it up on social media. And uh, most jobs now these days, and even auditions will make you sign some kind of confidentiality mm -hmm. or NDA so that you don't go put up other things on social media. That that's the real reason they're having you do it these days, because I don't know, voice talent like to put things up on, or even actors like to put things up on every time they get an audition, they put it up on social media. And it, you know, that's, that's what they're trying to, to, to kind of um, fight back on Curb a little bit. your enthusiasm. Yes, <laughs> everybody. Yeah, I think they're just trying to intimidate it, the it's, rest it's of us. It's fine to put stuff on social media. Just, you know, don't do it if you sign an NDA. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's fine to put pictures of your dog on there. Anyway, uh, we're talking with Rob Siglin Pagley. Again, if you got a question, throw it in one of the chat rooms. And uh, we're going to get to those questions right after these important messages. So don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 1039. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. 
Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. They're finally here. VoiceOver Essentials has finally received their shipment of the PortaBooth Pro 6.0. Like every business, they had long shipping delays to contend with. But those PortaBooth Pros are in their warehouse now and shipping out rapidly. They made, as usual, a number of improvements to the new booth, including more reliance on renewable infrastructure material like bamboo. They redesigned the cross-bracing Velcro front tabs for an even more rigid assembled booth and introduced their new clip script light. Now there are two LED flexible lights with two brightness levels for more or less light on your VO copy. And for the first time, you can power the script clip with batteries or USB. Of course, they continue their exclusive use of world-renowned Orlex Studio Foam, used by major recording studios everywhere. The Harlan Hogan PortaBooth Pro 6.0, powered by Orlex. If you've been waiting, get over to voiceoveressentials.com and get your PortaBooth Pro 6.0 now. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough. And the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is voheroes.com forward slash start. Again, that's voheroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to voheroes.com forward slash start. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. I and we're hearing, back. I love hearing those spots that were recorded in the studios over the years because it just kind of takes you back and you can kind of hear the environment of the studio. It's, I don't know, there's something nostalgic about it, not just hearing the voice. It's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's great that we have all those people with us every now and again. And it's like, yeah, you cut a few liners for us. It's great. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Rob Siglimpaglia, a uh, voiceover attorney. Uh, if you got a question again, throw it in the chat room. We got a bunch of great questions here. Yeah. Uh, one last thing I, you know, before we, we get to some of those, you've got a book out voiceover legal. Tell us a little bit about that and where they can get it. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's talks about all the things that we were talking about contracts. It talks about, uh, whether to set up your, when and whether to set up your, your, uh, LLC or your corporation, um, talks about all the, uh, talks about agencies, talks about unions, talks about all the things that, that you would uh, need to know as a voiceover artist or even an actor. Um, and you can get it on Amazon or you can get it at voiceoverlegal.com. All righty. That's a great book. I, you know, I've got a copy of it every now and again. It's like, what does Rob say? Ah, okay. <laughs> you know, so it, it, it makes it, it's important that you know these things. I think, it, I think a second edition will have to be, uh, absolutely along soon with yeah, all these I'm new good. cases. Huh? <laughs> I've been talking about that for a while. I got it <laughs> talking about, see, there you go. Where do I find the time? There you go. <laughs> That's I got to find some time. <laughs> Good point. All right. Why don't you get that first question from Julio Perez, George? Yeah. Julio uh, says, as we all know, many companies are turning to AI to attempt to satisfy voiceover needs using synthesized voices. They're also trying to maliciously imitate voices of bona fide talent without their knowledge as discussed in the May 11th, 2021 article in VOBS sponsor, voiceoverextra.com, regarding, regarding Bev Standing's lawsuit against TikTok for using her voice in an unauthorized manner. I'm, uns I'm aspiring to be a voiceover talent, and in working, I've been working in IT for many years, so this is a valid concern. What can VO talent, both current and aspiring, do to legally protect themselves when drawing up contracts with companies and or agents to minimize, if not completely eliminate, such malfeasance from occurring to them. What yep. type of language should be added to contracts 
So it would be forbid those clients from using voices of talent without their knowledge, uh, using the voices of the talent without their knowledge in order to skim payments and royalties. Now we talked about this a good deal, yes. but I don't know if you can put a cherry on top of that discussion. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you, like I said before, you have the bad contracts and the good ones. Yeah. For that's the legal term, the official legal term, bad versus bad. <laughs> bad versus so, good. <laughs> See, there's legalese right there for you guys. The ones that are, that are, that are negative, the bad ones. Um, I have, it's really hard to get them to change, get those companies to change their contracts because that's their business model is to put is to get as many, uh, not as many, but they're going to pick a, a number of um, synthesized voices and they're going to put it up on a roster on their website and let people go on there and just put their scripts up and, and read the, you know, whatever they want. So those contracts say that they're going to, you're selling them your files and your copyright forever in perpetuity and then they they can use it for whatever they want and they can sell it to whoever they want transfer it to whoever they want so mm -hmm. and the only thing you can do in those contracts is make sure that you're getting enough money so you got you got to right. negotiate the pay you know they're paying a couple of thousand you know you have to decide to like if you're never going to see another dime from this job are they giving you enough money right that it was worth your time do you really right. want to give that up yeah yeah because then you know to me, that's not worth it. You know, a couple right. of thousand dollars. Yeah. But the, the 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 ones that are positive, the the good contracts, they they say that they're not going to take ownership of your files. They're going to let you own your your own cloned, synthesized voice. So you're licensing the use of your voice, and it also gives you the right, if a third party were to, to use those, uh, use that voice uh, by sale or transfer or otherwise. You can you have the opportunity to make a contract with the, that third party for compensation, and also there's a component of um, paying residuals, paying some kind of you know percentage for every every time that they the voice is sold, you know for so someone goes up and uses your 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 voice for their copy, and you know the company gets paid whatever hundred dollars, you know you're going to get a, some kind of percentage out of that. And the percentage mm -hmm. is, you know, that's kind of open. You know, I've seen like 8%, I've seen 20%. There's all, they're all over the, kind of all mm -hmm. over the map. It's really what you negotiate. Mm -hmm. um, but those I think are very positive because, you know, that's a, that's a, an alternative stream of income. It's, it's residual income that you, you know, so you're going to do the work up front. You're going to do, you know, our 10,000 lines, whatever of copy or many hours it takes you to do that. But that's going to pay, that's going to pay the dividends in the future, the residuals in the future. So. Those are the those are the two types. Those are the yeah. two camps that I've seen for text to speech contracts out there. And obviously, I you know I, it's the the ones that are favable to the talent are the ones where you're, you're getting a piece of the action. In in yeah. my opinion, he also, sure said, he also asked about you know what type of language would you recommend that he probably read your book? Would he pick up some good tips in terms of what to? What do you think? <laughs> the, lang the language, the language, ha you, that's what I'm saying. Like the ones that the, the, where their business model is to create a bank of synthetic voices, yeah. they're not going to change. They're not going to change their contract. That's been my yeah. experience. They're not going to let yeah. you cross out imperp and they're not going to cross out the ownership. They're going to want mm -hmm. ownership and they're going to want in perpetuity because that's their business model. Mm -hmm. That's what that's so they're 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 very. I've, so they're going to just move on fact, to I've the had next talent, right? Zero. Yes, I've had zero changed to date. Zero. Yeah. So all the talent that came to me, I tried to negotiate. Zero, and I've had Maybe zero. Like saying, can changing. I take this car for free? Because I would. I was hoping this car <laughs> to be free today. No, we sell well, cars. Not, okay. Yeah, it's not. It's not free. That's the thing. They they pay like I said, two to four grand or two to five grand. And they've got a line out the door of the people that want that car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. that's the problem. Like, right? That's why we need to do shows like this to educate yes. talent. Like, stop we doing need those. <laughs> All right. And then the other right. thing about here's the other thing that you need to know that's really important about AI: garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. So, from what I understand, from the from speaking to people that actually create the voices, so there's there was. On the on the news, they were talking about like they would pay uh, people like uh, you know a fifty dollars Starbucks card to go in and say a whole bunch of lines in the studio, right? And that's where they were getting some of the text to speech um, data voices. From what I understand, 
those voices are the ones that sound m- much more like the computer voices and don't have the proper tone intonation mm-hmm. and all that. So that's why they pay voice talent, you know, two to $5,000, which they think is good to, to, to do a professional job because those are the ones that make the AI voices sound. Well, when you say they think better, that's good, real. the problem is there's too many voice talent. who think that's a good deal. Correct. Because right, they correct. see that money and they go, yeah. Yeah, no, that I mean, on it, on its face, two to five thousand dollars looks like a lot of money. Right. But when you think about what, if you step back and see what it's being used for, I call it career suicide. Yeah. That's mm. what I say. It's career suicide. That's what you're doing. You're you're taking five thousand dollars, even if it's five thousand dollars, and you're giving your voice to this data bank. And and I mean, maybe now, because talent will say, well, it, I it's a computer voice and you can tell that it's a computer voice. So, you know, the people are still using me if they want me to, that might be true. Now, five or 10 years from now, as the technology gets perfected, they don't need to have you re-record stuff. They can just use the stuff that you've already done and adapt it to the, the new technology. So it will make the voice sound much more realistic. Yeah. So, and, and now the technology even exists now where you don't even have to, they can just take, they can take this show, the VOBS show, Take your voice, Dan, your voice, George, and create a voice, a synthetic voice out of all those shows that you don't even have to record. So I, I've had talent that's- They have 11 the years audio of voice. content. <laughs> yeah, they could scrub- Thousands of hours of stuff. <laughs> I had I have one talent that was, was said that the, the, the company said it was okay for them to send an audio book, a six hour audio book over, and they could they do the voice out of that. So. So and, and that's there now the technology is you don't even have to go into the studio to record. They can just use stuff yeah. that you've, you've already done. Well, there was that thing about Roger Ebert. I think it was on uh, Ted talk where he's, he had already lost his ability to speak. You yep. know, he, his jaw was gone. Like Val Kilmer. So, so they're doing yeah, that oh, too with him. Yeah. Oh, they, I didn't know that. So yeah. So they're able to grab that years and years of audio and synthesize a voice. It's expensive. But it's getting cheaper to do, of course. And right, it's new it's, technology. Right. Yeah, but they, right. they can they don't have to have you record new stuff. <laughs> they can grab it from what's already been recorded. Right. Yeah. And it's 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 like it's 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 like any technology in its infancy. It's in its infancy. It's just starting. So, you know, any technology is gonna it gets better over time. That's that's the that's the nature of technology. So that's what a voice talent has to be aware of and keep in mind that this is just the beginning of this and you know 10 years from now those files i recorded 10 years ago those 10,000 lines they can live you know way past Forever. way past your lifetime <laughs> i mean which is kind of cool in a way it is yeah. kind of cool in a way when you think about it you know your voice lives on but you know th- what voice talent need to be concerned with because it's their business is how they're going to get compens- for compensated for that yeah. so yeah and your family and your yeah. family yeah right yeah Question from Amanda Brandt uh, related to this regarding AI. Do you have legal action if these companies, and generally they seem to be, are overseas? And how do you deal with that? Um, that's a very good question because they, if they're overseas, then you'd have to get someone overseas that can pursue them. Um, or if they're doing business somewhere here in the United States, which a lot of time these companies are, they're bigger companies, they're doing business here, then you can come, then you can bring action here in the United States. So like TikTok has had, has an office, a huge office that they opened uh, in New York city. So that's why we were able to file the case in the Southern district of New York federal court. The top four so, floors are the attorneys. Probably. <laughs> Just like Warner Brothers, where the, you know the, the most offices, except by the, beside the producers, are the attorneys. <laughs> right. Good point. Uh, you want to get the question from Chris Thorne there, George? Sure. Um, Chris says my question is in regards to using commercial music in podcasting, specifically during intro, outro, and as bumpers. What do I need to know, uh, and how cost prohibitive prohibitive is it to obtain rights to use music? And who who, who do I contact to ask permissions so there's all kind of as you know george and dan there's all kind of royalty free uh databases out there or you're where hearing you it commercials small around royalties i recognize some of that royalty free music yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean obviously you have to make sure that it's use it's usable for commercials Here's so. some. <laughs> that's called there royalty free music folks <laughs> <laughs> But there are databases where you can get get them, and it's, where it's legal. I mean, if you're good, if you're talking about 
getting a popular song, some kind of well-known song that's under a BMI or ASCAP, or, you know, it, it's going to be a lot of money. You're, you're in the tens of thousands in order to to get uh, the license. I mean, maybe if it's a little teeny piece, you know, five or ten seconds, you may be able to get away with it for thousands. But uh, you know, generally, it's going to be it's going to be up there. They're going to they're going to want a lot of money to license. And I guess it, if you so. have a really low circulation podcast, you know, if you're exactly. listening like, to like it. most exactly. podcasts. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can get you can get the covers. So you know, like you can sure. get. You just write to Harry Fox Agency, and you can you pay based on on the amount of downloads, and then you could cover the song. So you could play it on your own piano, or you know, whatever you want to do. Hmm. That's cheaper. But if you're gonna get the actual song, because you know the publishing house is the one that owns the rights, and they're the ones that are getting the ad, the you know the royalties under ASCAP and BMI, and that's why it costs so much money to license it. So you know, it's uh, funny. I've noticed lately. Uh, the Netflix and other programming I'm watching online is using way more like big time commercially released, you know, pop music mm -hmm. on their shows. Yeah. And they know their demographics. Is that, well, my well, theory is that they own the right. content because it's Universal, exactly. Exactly. Warner Brothers, or Sony. Exactly. That's so what I was going to say. They already that, own that's, it. That's why the big studios partner up with record companies. Because then they can, they have that whole library that they can use for their for their shows and movies. So exactly, Netflix obviously like partnered up with somebody. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. all righty. A question from Larry G. Um, does Rob's book cover everything that we might encounter, or should we need an attorney at some point? Second question: If you're a complete novice, what crucial steps, for example, one, two, three, would you recommend? just starting out if you were talking to your younger self <laughs> <laughs> that's a deep one <laughs> that's a good one yeah first one the first one is my book does cover everything you're going to encounter so it will give you a good background on pretty much anything that you're going to see come along in the voiceover business because except for maybe ai is going to be a new chapter because <laughs> that's new yeah. but um you know I, I i wrote the book because i used to get a whole bunch of questions these same kind of questions from voiceover mm -hmm. artists. And I wrote them down and then I put it into a book. That's how the book came about. So it's all the, all the basic questions that, that, uh, that come up. That's what the book covers. So, I mean, you still may need to hire an attorney for more complicated contracts to review contracts. Um, you know, if there's some things that you don't understand, then you'll, you need to hire an attorney, but the, the resources, it will point you in the right direction. The book that that's the, that's the point of it. It's to give you the basic knowledge so that you know if you can handle it yourself or you need to go to a pro. Um, so. That's where you're going to get your one, two, three steps, by the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that book. They're like written out there. <laughs> Thanks for that, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the book kind of lays it out because it did, you know, it talks about how I started too, um, talks about how I started in the business. Um, you know, and so if I, if it was my younger self or it's just, like me talking to a client that calls me that's starting out in the business like because i get i'm sure you guys get those calls too i get those calls you know about how, how you start out what, what should i do legally so i always ask them first of all do you have anything that you care about not losing do you have a job <laughs> do you have a house good point do you have money in the bank do you have anything so if you do then you should start an llc because llc's are so easy to start like i have one for every one of my films you know, yeah, every that's it's kind of that's the business practice in, in film is when you when you um do a film, you start an LLC for that film because that film has its own life. It's you know, it's got its own accounting, it's got its own investors, it's got its own producers. So that LLC stays separate from everything else in my life, that film. So the same thing when you're starting a voiceover business, you want that business to stay separate from everything else in your life. And that's what the LLC does. It shields all of those assets that you want to keep. So, you know, if you're just starting out at a college, then, then you may want to go sole proprietor. That's fine for a little while and, you know, until you start making some money and then start the LLC. But even then, it, you know, starting the LLC is not going to hurt anything. So it, it, uh, it, that's the smart move is to set up the LLC right out of the gate. And then legally, you're going to have the contract in the book. So have that ready to go <laughs> when you get the first when you do your audition, you get your first offer, make sure your contract's ready to go out because that's the next hurdle that I always get, the next call. Oh, I just got a gig. I got my contract and I'm, I don't know what to do. 
So, you know, that that's the next one. And then, you know, you should really learn about, um, you know, learn about, go look at the resources about rates, you know, cause that's, that's the other, that's the other big thing that, um, talent, new talent have, uh, that they're intimidated about, you know, how much do I charge? So there's a, plenty of resources out there, um, where you can check out what the going rate is for different types of jobs. So those are the things that I would concentrate on when you're first starting. I mean, there's many things that, many things that you can get bogged down on, but I wouldn't get bogged down on the details because that's, that's just going to make things, <laughs> make things much harder than they have to be. So those yeah. are the, those are the big things. We got one more question here from the one and only JS Gilbert. So you can ex expect what's going to come out of this. Uh, I have a question for Rob. JS, how you doing? Yes. Can we be <laughs> expecting you in a future Sharknado sequel? <laughs> Uh, there aren't any, so it's <laughs> oh, no. you. <laughs> Check it is over. <laughs> well, Rob, it is always a pleasure having you on, and uh, you know, I think we we need to make this an annual thing. We used to, and you know, since yeah. COVID came around, and suddenly it was like, mm, okay, we you know, we just sort of lost track of that. But we appreciate you coming on. How can, once again, how can they get a hold of Voiceover Legal? Uh, VoiceoverLegal.com or Amazon. Excellent. All righty. Thanks for being with us, Rob. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, All Rob. right. And we will see you soon. All righty. We got a couple of messages here, and then George and I are going to wrap it up and re-rack it for Tech Talk. So stay right where you are. We'll be right back. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, it's the time of the show where we talk about our lovely sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and tons of other really cool tools for collaborating and working remotely with your studios and other producers and directors and clients and everybody around the globe and source connect is available that it's an application that runs on windows or Mac. It is certainly a primarily a Mac focused app. Windows support is lagging, but it is coming along. So if you're stuck in windows, you can still run source connect 3.8, but 3.91 standard on Mac is really the application you want to get. You can get it as a subscription, or you can just pay for it at once if you don't like subscriptions. Now, I recommend the subscription because you're getting support along with that subscription. And you'll need, when you need support, I'm not saying you will need it, but when you do, you want it to be available to you right away because those sessions are very time sensitive. So really, I recommend the subscription. But if you're just not even sure about any of that, just get a 15-day free trial. Just go over to source-elements.com. Just get your account set up and get it tested. That's what you need to do. Anyway, thanks, Source Elements. We really appreciate your support of VOBS. We'll be right back to wrap it up. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Oh, it's always great having Rob on the show. Always something interesting, stuff we don't normally think about, but constantly should especially these days with some of the things that have been going on yeah. uh, next week on this very show, or you can stay and watch it live. If you're here, uh, we've got uh, tech talk number 64 and we got lots of cool stuff to talk about with that. So make sure you tune in next week for that. Uh, who are our donors of the week? 
We've got donors. We've got lots and lots of donors. Thank God. Donors. Jill Goldman with a big explanation point. Somebody do. Uh, Rob Ryder. Patty Gibbons. Antland Productions. Michelle Blanker. Christopher Epperson. Sandra Manwiller. Philip Sapir. Trey Mosley. Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. Shauna Pennington Baird. Martha Kahn. Don Griffith. Stephen Chandler. Robert Leadham, Michael Kearns, and Graham Spicer. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Hey, you can join our mailing list, too, if you're watching tonight because you saw that I put it in the mailing list. Hey, this is, we got Rob Siglin Pegley on this week. You get those kind of notices so you don't miss a thing, and that's really important. Also need to thank our amazing sponsors who have been with us below these many years because they know we're talking to the people that want what they have. Uh, for instance, Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, voiceover extra source elements, voheroes.com, voiceactorwebsites.com and JMC, JMC demos. demos. All righty. Thanks to Jeff Holman for being in the chat room tonight and getting those questions back to us and our amazing technical director, Sue Merlino, who gets in here every week or every other week and uh, coming from all the other jobs she has. And getting all the buttons pushed here and making sure that we look and sound fabulous. <laughs> yeah, thank you. She's a modern uh, woman in the on the woman in the gig economy. Maybe. That's right. And we're glad to have her. That's right. And of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's gonna do it for us uh this week for Voiceover Body Shop. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, again, join us on Facebook and get on our mailing list. And we're here to help you with your home voiceover studio next with Tech Talk, which we're gonna re-rack for, so don't go away. Anyway, that's going to do it for us for now. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.